I'm a car guy. And so you'd think that would mean that I have a lot of nice cars, or at least one nice car. But that's what a lot of people get wrong. In reality, I have two Saturns, which famously went bankrupt uh, during GM's financial crisis in 2008, and a Buell motorcycle, which is also bankrupt. So my friends make fun of me for having an affinity for vehicles that aren't serviced, aren't heard of, and aren't worth anything. I bought a house in March, uh, which I lovingly refer to as Mega Garage, because the garage is bigger than the house, which, when you think about it, is really my main credential as a car guy now. Uh, my friends have all been asking me, you know, what the first project I'm going to get is. So I decided it would be a good idea to go out and buy a 54-year-old Chevy truck. This isn't the V8 I thought I was going to get. It's not the project I thought I was going to get. Uh, but it is pretty cool. A lot of people use these trucks for cookie-cutter car builds. Uh, they slam them real low. They put a Corvette engine in them. Um, you know, make them into a show car, try to flip them for money. That's not what I want this truck for. Uh, I sold the idea of this truck to my girlfriend as, oh, it has a camper shell. We can go camping. We can pick up things for the house in it. Uh, in reality, this truck is how I'm going to get my next project cars into this garage and all the parts for them. And hopefully those projects turn out to be cooler than this one is. The truck is a 1969 Chevy C20. It has a 350 and a four speed on the floor. Didn't find out until I picked it up that the first gear is actually L for low. It sounds very convenient for towing, but doesn't really seem like it counts as a four speed. Overall, the truck is in decent condition. There's some rust in the normal places, definitely some neglect over the years, but overall, decent shape does have these really tiny wheels and tires on it that I just hate looking at, but that's fixable. It has a camper shell, which is a nice bonus. There's mold growing out of one of the windows, which is kind of weird, and the whole thing is held on with C-clamps, which is even weirder. Bed's a little rusty, but it is filled with a bunch of parts that I'm excited to find out if those are extras, takeoffs, or... The interior is uh, Spartan, gives off 70s school bus vibes, rubber floor mats, passenger seat shoots dust up at the passenger, it's not cooperating right now. I was looking for a 1969, partially because of the cool blue bow tie on the hood. Also because in California, the only cars that are allowed to have 69 in the license plate are 1969 cars. Under the hood is rusty, greasy, dusty, We'll sort all of that out. Pretty excited about that. Best part about this car is the noise that all the door handles and latches make when you open them. And the worst part of the car is the steering play. Felt a little dangerous to be driving this home, but it made it home. You have to learn to ride one side of the steering. None of the gauges work. You can see that the fuel gauge is over full, so that's great. But oil pressure, water temperature, battery, who needs them? Tack. Didn't even come with one. It does have this hole in the floor that my coworker was so nice to put his foot through when he sat in it. I have been needing an excuse to get a TIG welder for a few years, so we'll get that patched up. I think somebody learned how to weld on that before. Reupholstering one of these seats is more like working on a couch than a car upholstery. It should be easy. We'll deal with that little rust spot later. Hope you guys appreciate the noise that all of these make when you close the doors and hoods. It's definitely the best part. The hood also doesn't release from the driver's side. You just pop it from the front. And so yeah, we have a lot of work to do. Let's go figure that out. Breaking the list up into two sections, there's stuff I gotta do just to get it on the road. Luckily for pre-smog cars in California, that's pretty easy. So the things I have to do just to make it safe, fix the steering, fix the gauges so I know the engine's not about to blow up, fix the front suspension so it's not leaning forward 10 degrees, figure out 
where that oil leak is coming from. I guess that's pretty much it. And then the regular stuff like change the oil, change the spark plugs, change the coolant. There's lots of stuff I'd like to do. Driver's window doesn't really work. I need to figure out all the rust. It has no windshield wipers. Cabin fan doesn't do anything, neither do the lights. And someone many rusty years ago decided it would be a good idea to put those ugly Jeep eyelids over the headlights. I haven't really figured out how to set up the garage. We've been lucky so far that it's big because all the furniture that didn't fit in the house is in here now. I'd like to have a wood shop, a metal shop, and a bunch of cars, but we got it cleaned up, room for the truck. This kind of feels like cheating. The garage is pretty big, definitely by Los Angeles standards. I was joking with my girlfriend that if we're careful about how we park them, we can fit two deep and four wide, plus two on the side. We're at 10 cars and we haven't even put any on the lawn yet. Of course, I did also learn how much of a pain in the butt it is to move all of your cars around when really you only need to move one of them, especially when that one doesn't have power steering. So let's speed this up. The RV door also makes this side of the garage an easy spot for a lift, so add that to the number of cars we can store. Dugon says to test it in an inconspicuous location, but who has time for that? Okay, that's not nearly enough. With that, my short career in the U.S. Army is over. So there you have it. Wildly successful day. Three items off the list. Never mind that none of them have to do with the actual car. Uh, my girlfriend hates me. The environment hates me. I'm pretty sure the people honking at me and passing me in the shoulder hate me. And if this project doesn't turn out well, I think I'll hate me too. If you like this video, uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'm mostly doing this as a way to document the project and keep myself honest. But hey, if I never have to work again, uh, that'd be pretty cool too. Thanks for watching.